Hello, everybody. It's Friday night and it's weekender time once more. Ahead of you is a jam-packed show brimming full of gaming goodness with a very RPG theme to it. And in keeping with that, this week's prize is a big bundle from Free League Publishing of the One Ring RPG. So there's a starter set, a GM screen, and the core rulebook as well. If you want to be in with a chance to win that magnificent prize, pop a comment below, be a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and if you can do all the socially sherry things as well, that would be amazing. Otherwise, sit back and relax, because your weekend starts here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Weekender. I'm joined by a whole host of friendly faces this week, including Brother Lloyd. Hola. Tanned after holiday. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm looking slightly more pink. Well, yeah, we'll take that. We'll take slightly more pink. Uh, also, the delightful, free, and the delicious Ben. With oh, us delicious. as always. Mm. Uh, he's tasty. always, always, always tasty. Uh, so has everybody had a good week this week? Yes. Yes. I've, been, right. I've been playing lots and lots of games. You have, yeah. It's it's a hard life being me sometimes, oh. you know. <laughs> As Bill Murray once said in uh, Groundhog Day, you've got to keep the talent happy. So yeah, it's, it's, working, it's working for me. Uh, yeah. But we don't have anything major to update you with at the moment. No, no, no major it's all, updates. All things are coasting along on an even keel. Uh, with that in mind, we're just going to get stuck straight into the show then. Yeah. And this week, we're kicking things off, as always, with the most important part, the indie of the week, and it's ill-gotten games. Mm. Yes, you heard that right. Uh, so, as I was trolling, as I do, through the wonderful world of Tiny Fighting Men, I'd noticed that a previous indie had shifted some stuff to another company. And so while I was perusing what they were doing, I found some stuff from this company there. Uh, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. I'll go and have a look and see what ill-gotten games are all about. And they're a kind of print-and-play company. Um, I do like a bit of print-and-play. Yeah. Print yeah. In this case, it's 3D printing rather than 2D printing. Mm -hmm. um, but they have a whole host of games that are available for free, gratis. Uh, and then, obviously, if you're interested, you can pick up additional stuff uh, from their library then over time. Um, so there's a couple of miniature-based games, and there's an RPG, and I'm going to start off with the RPG, uh, which is called Crux, which is a, a little universal role-playing game. Uh, so it doesn't have a in-depth world of its own. There is a world uh, which is sort of more expanded upon in the Coils of Chaos, which is called Thraw An, um, if I believe... It's a strange yeah. name. <laughs> yeah. uh, but essentially, the crux system, uh, which you can grab from this website, is just a 30-page long system, uses all the polys, um, and allows you to make anything from fantasy through to science fiction, passing which, through post-apocalyptic and all the rest as you go. Which that cover makes really obvious. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that could potentially just be the same universe. The same, yeah. you know, that could be the view from the Wizard's Tower. Yeah, he just yeah. sits there going, hopefully those neotronic cyborgs never come near yeah. me. Leave um, me alone with your technology. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mechanically, <clears throat> uh, the whole kit and caboodle is about building your own sort of thing. And as they say, they've got some reference points, including one shot, you know, sort of single page adventures and things that you can buy from them for like a, a dollar. Um, but you can sit down and oh. if you're looking for a system, uh, that's relatively easy to get into, then Crux has got a lot going for it. So you're generally, it's a very smart cave person. <laughs> um, or, or maybe it's just a cosplaying teacher. Uh, you've only got four <laughs> attributes. You've got bulk, vitality, presence, and aptitude. And depending on your score, you've got zero to six, will tell you whether you're absolutely superhuman or not. Uh, and they've got various ways to generate things like random dice rolling or dice pools to distribute so you can tailor it to your own adventure. Um, so it's all fairly standard stuff, but the mechanics themselves are very simple to get into. 
Yeah. And despite the, the rule set only being 30 pages, so relatively self-contained and, and simple, there's actually quite a lot in it when it comes to skills, magic, psionics, abilities. So you don't have to, as a GM, create an awful lot of this yourself. You can mm. just actually go, well, there's rules in there for building extra limbs, whether that's <laughs> robotic limbs, alien limbs, or, you know, fantasy race, you know, hexapedal or whatever it happens to be. Um, so the tools are all there. It's a, an excellent, excellent set of rules for you to use, expand, and develop in whatever uh, direction you want. Um, what I was really interested by, what sort of was kind of selling it to me, there are a couple of tables in here um, about your character, the character development, and how they behave. And that's always the hardest Heroic part. Heroic nudity. When you're, <laughs> yep, when you're throwing people down. Uh, perfect for Warren. He's always tearing his uh, loincloth yeah. off and then charging at people. If, if I tell Warren that he will actually get a bonus to his abilities when his black oh. iron wars are, rips the loincloth off and charges, he'll be on this like, yeah. uh, you know, flies around uh, honey. But it's this. They've got a, a thing called, um, well, it's Ocean. Openness, consciousness, extrovertism, oh, agreeableness, cool. neuroticism. As they point out, none of these are good or bad in and of mm -hmm. themselves. They just give you keywords. And I know anytime I've sat down to play a game, the hardest part is thinking a character's name and then thinking up how they act. How they act. How yeah. are they different from you as a person? And especially difficult if it's a new player. Somebody's never role played before and you set them down and you go, okay, here's how you get your stats right. Now, who are you? And they look at you blankly, and then eventually they'll go, I'm Jimmy Carr. And you go, no, no personality in this place. Uh, I'm the Crocodile Hunter. Again, no. You know. So being able to go, well, here's a, a simple table that you can roll on, and it tells you what type of a person you are. And over time, that can change then. So you might start off whatever it happens to be, you know, stable. And then over time, maybe if it's a horror game, that changes. And it's, it's just little keywords that you can sort of look at. And then there's also this table um which they suggest like a two d4 rules on it to give you an idea of kind of your backstory or, or how you behave <laughs> um so you know you can be a, a maverick or you can be uh a ninny a ninny, be a ninny angry, or a twig. Pecky. and some of the <laughs> some of them are personality types some of them are physical um ways that you may act or behave or be viewed uh so, and again it's just really it's two really simple tables that open up a character so much. And then the, after that, you know, go for your guns because a lot of new players, they'll either just start rolling dice and everything becomes a dice rolling exercise and there's no real role playing in their role playing game. Is it just one of these or do you, or do you combine these to make your character? Oh, you can you combine both of those to make your character, yeah. So it could be a raunchy twit. You could be a raunchy twit <laughs> who's, who's very sweaty and is also a bit of a punk. Oh, nice. You know, that, that's fine. Or you could be a, a, a raunchy a, twit. A goofy, <laughs> rugged, deadpan weirdo, which yeah. sounds just like me. Um, I like the idea of using it uh, and you, you get, generate each of those individual words and hmm. then you maybe write like a little sentence yeah, that explains uh, that yeah. word with your character. I think that's a really cool Why are you like that or how you're like that? Or yeah, and, and it just gives you an in. Yeah. Um, like I say, there's also archetypes again handy to generate if you want to generate something very quickly which is very good mm -hmm. for for gms wanting to generate uh npcs yeah Think people people you meet who do you meet you meet x y or z and you've got a stat line there so if you don't have to be sitting with screeds and screeds of pages in front of you of all these people you can just do it on the fly it just gives you a very basic stat line and abilities that they would have so you know when people run into a civilian you know what they've likely to have unless it's somebody specific for your your actual game you don't need to go into any more sort of deep delves with it and of course then we have um the magic powers and mm -hmm. psychic powers which are separate and different i quite like a portation picking something up from one place in line of sight and dumping it another uh and mm -hmm. if they don't want to they can try and resist you but you know when when Warzan has ripped that loincloth off, that is exactly the time to pick him up with your mind and move him somewhere else, far away, <laughs> as far down that corridor as you can. Um, so yeah, it's only thirty That's pages long, cool. but yeah. there's a lot in there as mm -hmm. a basic rule set for free, uh, up to including yeah. um, 
some ideas for scenes and, and how things work, including if you want to play incorrectly using miniatures, you can in, <laughs> in feet, feet or uh, centimeters. Yeah. Um, okay, it's, it sounds like it's, it's got a lot of the kind of charm of something like Savage Worlds, but I yes. quite like that, as you say, this is free and the <laughs> system seems quite easy and simple to dive into as well, which is quite uh, nice. If, yeah. like me, you can't cope with this PDF screwy thing. You can buy a physical book from. <laughs> oh, that's good. Lulu. Oh, that's great. Is that it? I know Lulu's a character I've got behind me on the shelf from Raging Heroes, but I think it may also be somebody who prints oh, uh, well, books. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, it says in here where you can buy a physical yeah. version from. But there you that's go. Good. It's it's a very simple um, oh. system, and if you two, there's Rampage running the race. Uh, if if you want to to get into role playing, this is a very good way of doing it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. An interesting little system and so mm. diverse, you can bend it to your will in whatever way, shape, or form you want to. Uh, so, oh. so I quite like Crux, and I like the fact that after this, if you want to pick up some of the other um, PDFs that they do, the the other worlds and adventures, they're not expensive. I think Coils of Chaos is like five dollars, and then there's like I say, one dollar for one shot uh, campaigns uh, <laughs> or little games which are good to get people into it. Who knows what's mm. inside this bug? That man mm. does. And I, <laughs> I admire his uh Doesn't look like detail. his first road, yeah. No, 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 it's not. Anyway, so yeah, so Crux is, Crux is uh, the first thing that uh, ill-gotten game sort of caught me with. And then I started poking around their site and came across a whole host of other things. Oh, Lord, there's a whole host of other things. <laughs> if I go over here and go, uh, I would like to see your projects, please. Uh, and you go, all right, this all sounds just great. You've got pocket tactics. Um, Crux and the coils are obviously the RPG, but then from this, they sort of expand. So pocket tactics is a hex-based skirmish game. Okay. And the reason it's po pocket tactics is they're, they're 15 mil. Oh, nice. And you could essentially put them in a coat pocket, bring them with you. Brilliant. Oh, that's it's, awesome. It's got a... A lot going on with it. Uh, when I look at the factions, you've got the benighted kingdom of the Hsk. The bog people of the Maya. The bog people. <laughs> yeah. Brigands of the forest, cursed of yeah. the beheaded. That's where your arrows. randy twists come from. That's the <laughs> <laughs> Get in there. The faithful of the luminous goddess, and so on. And so it reminds, on, it reminds and me so a lot. On. There was a hex-based game. Was it called Chaos? From Chaos like yeah, chaos. Ch chaos just played on the screen. These yeah, yeah. Spectrum by Julian Gallup. Yeah, uh, it was a Games Workshop yeah. game. Oh yeah, this kind of reminds gives you those vibes with the yeah, kind maybe of maybe Chaos Two because yeah. I think they did something yeah. weird for Chaos Two and it wasn't as good. Uh, <laughs> but okay, it's true. But the interesting thing about Pocket Tactics for me, and the reason it's shown there with the big bag, it should really be called Bag Tactics. Each of these <laughs> factions. So, if we look at the War Tribes of the Central Expanse, for example. They are uh, big, brutal, beastly things. That guy with a bucket on his head and maced spike fists is a delightful <laughs> fellow. You know, strange. Looks monsters. like a He-Man enemy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, oh. very much. It has that that yeah. mix of fantasy and post-apocalyptic. It's it's like Master Blaster meets He-Man. It's uh, post-apocalyptic cheerleaders at the back. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there's also the terrain tiles, the hex tiles. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing Pocket Tactics, um, which is only, as you can see here, a little sort of wow, seven page just seven sheet. pages. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Skip up to the, the top. When you're playing... Ooh, everyone's sick. That's, <laughs> right. that's fine. They can be sick. You have a, a castle or a base or a, yeah. a, a faction camp, and then 10 terrain tiles, and your opponent has 10 terrain tiles in their base. And you work out whoever the first player is going to be. They put their base down, and then all the other train tiles except your opponent's base go in a bag and get shaken up, mm -hmm. and you place them onto the table. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you place them, you create the map between you, tile about. Um, so a bit like, um, what's that game? Is it Carcassonne? What's the Carcassonne. Carcassonne, yeah. yeah. A bit like that. Oh, Carcassonne. So you're building up a map as, yes. as you go kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so you build this this 
battlefield and once everything's down then you start playing the game out and it's a, a very simple six dice system so things will have specific sort of stats and maybe they've you they, oh. generally, they generally use three red three blue so you don't actually start the game until all the tiles are down all the tiles are down and then that's the train you're fighting over and, and some, within a game and, and some, <laughs> of, some of the train tiles will be hazard so water for example you could uh, you have to roll a d6 and a four, five, or six, you're fine. And one, two, three, you've drowned. Unlucky. Um, <laughs> but it means then that each of the little sets has sort of terrain specific tiles for their faction. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you build up this weird world of fantasy and post apocalyptic and sci fi. Um, but let, let's say you had a, a force where you're you're fighting. They use what a commander there against the peacekeeper. So blue dice or defense dice. And then red dice are your attack dice, and both sides will be rolling a mixture of these depending on how good they are. So you might roll three red and two blue, because that's a very powerful thing. So three attack and two defense, and something else might have a lot more defense. And you compare sort of highest to highest um, in both directions because all combat is simultaneous to work out who win. And it's just a simply a highest number to highest number. Do they match or do they beat? And that tells you who's won. Um, uh, a specific combat so nice you can play yeah. through very quickly and there's only a, a small set of sort of keywords to go with there is a um a video a video oh nice <laughs> explaining how video. it plays through and it was available on steam at one point as well through the um, tabletop uh, simulator yeah. well they're playing on a tabletop simulator uh through, there's the, a steam workshop so all ah, right yeah you know, yeah. where people can create stuff and, and get in there. Uh, but as you can see, it's uh, a very simple little game, but they've yeah. already put so much in there that you've got what's it, like 20-odd factions already. Uh, and then the the rules themselves, two sides of an A4, and then your special rules for whoa, special rules for whatever your actual um I was going to say, because that's the thing I was running, because obviously the mechanics are very simple, but then I, I like that you've got specific bonuses for your force so it yeah. actually does feel like it's individuals which yeah is so nice. getting yeah. so things like this is a very um I suppose elven faction or, or foresty faction with druids yeah. and beasts and stuff so you get advantage in the forest you get additional die um or the undead certain undead characters roll uh four five or six when they're killed and they're not actually mm -hmm. dead, unlucky. They've, they've rubbered back up again, that type of thing. Uh, so it's not just a, a flat static game in that regard then. You have the ability to go in and, and sort of customize and tweak. So it's not just the same factions, but skinned differently. Oh, okay. There are yeah. a small amount of keywords, but it, the, the whole concept is it's a small game that you can play very quickly. But every mm -hmm. time you play, even with the same two factions, because you do the, the draw mechanic, to build your map, it's not going to be the same experience every time. You don't play with everything on the table. You essentially have your your army in reserve, so you can only deploy two or three of your models, and they are sufficient because of the terrain setup for you to actually take advantage and either clear the the board of your opponent's models will get you a victory, or taking out your opponent's base camp will gain you a victory. Yeah. Um, so you might go for the bigger things move in early on because the trains set up really well for you whereas your opponent is trying to flood the table with chaff just to keep you back or keep you away because it's just not working for them because whatever terrain tiles they've drawn have just been terrible i just thought it was a, a fascinating game Sounds also, really good yeah i've also done the um the models obviously they're they're scaled for 15 but uh i believe you get a 30 mil version as well for when That's you're great. printing so sort of upscaled with slightly more detail <laughs> You can uh, take up more room on your coffee table. Yeah, if you, if, you want, if you want to go big with the pocket tactics uh, and make yeah. it less pockety, you Bag can do that. Bag tactics. But, but I, I really think the, the concept of, of a small hex-based tactical game is is really, really fun. No, I think that's a really fun idea. Really interesting. Yeah. If I get back to the... the a train uh, game. Play it on the train with your friends. Hey. Exactly. Right. Also, it's worth pointing out, you don't have... To, you're not building just like a, a blockbuster's five by five or whatever it happens to be three by three spread it out, you, spread like. out, you can leave yeah. negative spaces where people can't enter them so when you're building obviously you're you're 
it's like creating the chessboard as you go yeah and yeah. making sure that only the uh only the requisite white and black squares are in the position where you need them to be because you've got still, nothing but horses do they still have a flat version or is it all 3d i've only seen 3d there is a maple version that you can download nice um but again, you just use colored maples to represent your force you can instead. use colored maples yeah. or if you don't yeah. have maples you can you can print out uh their own little maple 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 just use dice i suppose <laughs> yeah uh, for dice. Yeah. Where am I at? Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, I think the the whole concept of Ilgotten Games is the fact that they've it's print and play, but in a a three D version rather than a new uh, dimension, a, sta- a standard, old, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, rather than the standard two uh, D run through printer. But again, there's nothing in that that couldn't be two D printed as well. It'd be, be nice to see mm. if they still had that. The other, then, the other thing as well is that you know there's a lot of games out there where they're like you can 3D print this entire game, but it'll take you about four weeks to do so. Well, Whereas yes. this, you could be like, I'll put this on and it'll all be done in about two days, and then, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and you can start playing the game, which is quite nice. That's where I want to go to. If I go to the store and I skip down to oh wow, Pocket Tactics maybe or no, there is there Pocket Tactics. Ah. So there, there is a, a little free. Uh, look, there's free print, 2D, print, 2D print, 2D print, oh, and 2D play. print, and play. Oh, happy days! It yeah. is still there. It's only a fiver, and you can do That's it nice. or the meeply one. Oh, I like it's, that. It's I do meeply. like wood. That's nice. <laughs> but it's, it's because I assume but it's, these. But are, it's three D printed. This is three D printed no again. <laughs> I but do like having, fake wood. <laughs> instead of actually having then the the three D castles on a or hills or whatever on a on a hex, you just have a relief. You just have the there, relief, yeah. which yeah. really does mean that it, it would all go in your pocket quite happily with two mm. factions. So it's probably a good one to start with. They have I'd a probably if I was trying to do that though, I'd probably mix the actual three D models with the two D reliefs mm. rather than go because if I'm going to print them, I'm not going to print meeples. Yeah. That is true. Uh, they do have a little set of uh, free downloads, so the Crux rules, universal role playing, fantasy role playing. Role playing well, yeah. These are all in here, along with actually a chunk of miniatures because they do 3D printing as well, um, which would take far too long to explore. But I will open. There are a lot of different there is sets. A yeah. lot of stuff. Some things. Um, but the the little oh, earthen kind. I love those. I've oh, also yeah. seen I've also seen teddy bear soldiers, which is just adorable. So, mm. so teddy bear soldiers <laughs> oh. and, and little Mises. Uh, so, beyond the copper doors is a, a more fantasy uh, expansion for Crux RPGs. So, these are some of the the foes that you may find or face when you're in there, uh, including Mises, <laughs> all the Mises. <laughs> Including this, this guy, yeah, mace. this this guy, yeah. Look at that. Can you imagine that comes screaming out of the darkness. Warzan is just disrobed, and all of a sudden that leaps onto his back. At that point, definitely apportation down the corridor with him. Off they go. Uh, the other game I want to show you very quickly then is if you take sort of pocket tactics core rules, which are very very short, and then sort of mesh them with crux a bit, they have a game called Open Tactics. Which is more like a, a standard skirmish game. Um, right, okay. Again, miniature agnostic, so you can print their stuff here or you can use your own. Um, but it's a universal rule set. Uh, it's a bit more in depth. It uses the same defense and offense dice, but with uh, a few more um, tweaks to it. And, and sort of, you're playing with five to 10 miniatures aside. Uh, so, and on a, a sort of a three by three or four by four board. And the idea behind this is to sort of play a gang warfare. Bigger rule set, you'll notice 72 pages. However, the last half of that is scenarios, uh, campaign rules, uh, that sort of thing. So your little war band can change over time, can lose limbs, can level up as you go through it. Uh, so it's an interesting one. I've not had a chance to look in depth at this, um, but it, it has that sort of blend of the simplicity of pocket tactics, but then added to that the the more sort of complicated rules for terrain and line of sight and cover and movement and all of this sort of Very thing cool. that you would expect to see in a a, uh, a skirmish game. Um, if I'm just going to make everybody seasick, but going wah, <laughs> going to skip straight down. So you've got your you've got your magic again. Uh, so telling you what you need to do to cast various spells and then after the magic we go straight into the scenarios um so again 
free rule set, but they don't skimp on the design side of it. Uh, yeah. it's, it's not like they've gone, well, you move and then roll a red and a green dice and whoever rolls higher on the red is one. There's there's a lot in there, up to and including um, the, the campaign system itself. There's a Phantom Legion. I do not want those. Where's my campaign system? There we go. So into your weather and scenarios. And I always like things like that. You know, heavy driving rain, killing off people's ballistic capabilities. So when you arrive on your tabletop with a load of elves with, uh, you know, bows sitting in the background looking smug like elves always look because they're <laughs> racist. Uh, then your orcs can just run up and bap them in the side of the head with an axe. That's really nice. I like that. Which, uh, which I'm okay. always, always happy about. Or yeah. reduction ranges for darkness and that sort of thing so the the second half of this the the scenarios and the campaign system i think is is well worth exploring further um because it's unusual for that sort of level of detail to go into a free game yeah, it's yeah. just the rules um and maybe one scenario whereas in this one they really have sort of gone into the the nitty-gritty of, of trying to make it uh, more interesting um yeah so open tactics pocket lots tactics, of interesting things for people props. to try out yeah. and, and if you you know if you are interested in all of that and if you do the 3d printing thing as well uh, it's definitely worth taking a look at them because they, there's a lot of stuff they do um some of it is very unique oh. other things are slightly more identifiable Athorian, <laughs> i see you uh but it, it run, again it runs the gamut like their games of fantasy, post-apocalyptic, and sci-fi. So yeah. even things like the arcade machines, if you want to rebuild Flynn's arcade from Tron, which <laughs> who wouldn't, because Flynn lives, um, then you can do that. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> uh, the ambush more. I love that. I also love the idea that this is in the middle of the, the table, just a big, oh, just a big more lurking there but meanwhile these claws or tentacles are constantly moving or burrowing out in different places so yeah. you're, you're trying to get close enough to drop a grenade down that uh sarlacc pit so yeah they've they've some weird and wacky stuff oh. like i say a variety of people um, their wall hala stuff is very worth looking having a look at yeah but obviously not now i, I mean <laughs> maybe, <laughs> but, having had a look at the games maybe we'll revisit them for yeah that'd be cool in that'd the future nice. and, and yeah. have a real deep dive into uh into what they do and what they get hey. up to but if you're interested check out ill-gotten games uh i think it's definitely worth your while definitely yeah yeah right we'll have a quick swish and when we come back we'll be taking a look at the news Coming to you from the center of Northwestern Europe. Covering board games, war games, card games, and all that sh you love. It's the Muck News. <laughs> so, yeah, diving into some tabletop gaming news. Uh, we're going to be starting off with an update of what's happening with uh, War Machine Mark IV, or MKIV as I like to say. Uh, so this was a look at what they've been showing off for Kador, who are going to be like the big third faction that's going to be landing later this year for War Machine Mark IV. Um, they sort of took a bit of a deep dive into what's going to be available as part of the core army box. Um, so as everyone will know by now, they've been following War Machine. And if you don't know, uh, these are all going to be 3D printed by privateer press and then shipped out to people and these are going to be designed as your really good entry points into playing war machine so it'll come with i think it's about 50 points worth of stuff be to start playing the game then you can ramp it up with additional accessories and stuff as they come out inside here you're going to have that chap in the middle Capitan Ilari Borishuk, who is the new warcaster uh he's one of the sort of sniper team members of uh the Kador ranks. He's a gun mage and all that kind of good stuff as well. So I'll be able to rock around with some really cool spells and a big massive gun at the same time. Uh, you're also going to get those two heavy warjacks. Uh, it wouldn't be Kador if they weren't heavy. <laughs> so you get the direwolf heavy warjack and also the great uh, the great bear heavy warjack as well. Uh, they both come with a whole range of different arm and weapon options, so you can customize them to your heart's content. And because of the way that they're doing this with the 3D printing, these are all going to be designed with magnetization points attached into the arms and hands and all that kind of stuff. So you can tinker with them to your heart's content, which is very nice. Is it, just, is it just this starter set they're doing the 3D printing of? 
they're doing 3D printing on everything. Everything will be 3D printed from now on by them, and then it will all be shipped out to you. Mm. So there we go. Does that so. include older releases or just new releases coming forward? Everything that will be produced from now on will be 3D printed by them in-house or in a location in Europe or Asia or wherever, and then shipped out locally to people. So it allows them to create everything digitally um, and then ship it out to the different companies to get them to print it for you, basically, which is pretty cool. So, yeah, going in a very different direction to what we'd normally see in terms okay. of people playing with resin or metal or plastic. But obviously, all those materials cost quite a lot of money, I suppose. So there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, plus the shipping yeah, yeah. of the things Fix from that. America and all that yeah. kind of stuff, yeah, and keeping hold of stock and all that kind of stuff. Oh, you see, there's still, there's still stock that needs to be held and there's still shipping that needs to be done because obviously these things still need to go in boxes. Mm-hmm. Well, that's true. Yes, but they it still means that need to be supplied and stocked. Yeah. But it does mean that someone, uh, a location in Europe, could produce all of the stuff for Europe, rather than it all being done in America and then having to be shipped over to Europe and then shipped out from there. So it does kind of cut down a little bit on their shipping issues, I suppose. But we shall see how it all comes together. I guess mm-hmm. um, they've also got inside this set. You get the Winter Core Infantry Unit, which comes with support weapons. So you've got uh, rocket launchers and grenade uh, launchers and all that kind of good stuff as well as kind of uh, as well as machine gunners. And then you've also got the Winter Core Infantry Standard Edition to that as well. So you can wave the flag for Kador. You've also got your shock trooper gunners, your Arcanist unit, and there's also a Winter Core. Officer Solo in there as well. Um, so this is going to be the core big box that you're going to be able to pick up to start playing Kador, which comes with infantry and warjacks as well to, to sort of round things out. Uh, but then they're also going to be releasing a bunch of stuff following on from that um, after the big sort of epic release around the kind of end of September, beginning of October, moving into November as well. So, yeah, so we're going to get the Signar and the Orgoth first, as we saw in our previous sort of deep dive of what they're doing for War Machine Mark IV. Uh, But then as things move on, uh, we're going to be seeing Kador put into the mix as well. Mm -hmm. And then things will start to develop a little bit more into next year, where they'll be looking at all the other factions and then also looking at hordes uh, next year around Gen Con time as well. So it's a big list of interesting things as well. Oh, and for anyone who's interested in legacy armies, uh, so these are all the forces that aren't actually getting updates for a while. These are the um, rules that they're going to be putting forth over the next little while through the app and all that kind of stuff as well. So make sure to go and check out that link because it'll have all the details for you of what you need to go and look at and all that kind of stuff as well. So you have a bunch of Legion stuff lying around or Circle for Hordes or something. You can go and have a look at that and see what you think. So yeah, some good stuff coming up for Kador. I was someone who was a little bit of a Kador main back in the day. I used mm-hmm. to play them uh, back when I started with War Machine back in second edition, I want to say, uh, and had very good fun with them <laughs> because they have massive Warjacks that can take a whole <coughs> bunch of damage. Uh, and then dish it out as well. And also you've got the Butcher, who is possibly one of the coolest war casters that ever existed, who never really does much war casting, well, just does a lot of axing. Just, just so thumping stuff. I was just always more interested stuff, yeah. in the troll bloods and the... Um, oh, I love the troll bloods, yeah. The, yeah. the horde side of things, because uh, mm-hmm. they're, they're a very distinct look to them yes. anyway. Yeah. Uh, and then I quite like the idea of, of mad Celtic slash Scottish trolls battering people i painted mine as the teenage mutant ninja turtles oh. so I had each of them with different colored hair on there oh so that's cool babe <laughs> that's something certainly yeah. uh, i think that's insult to troll <laughs> everywhere to be brilliant. no but yeah, maybe, maybe. Cool. Maybe. i didn't put maybe pizza on you. the basis though <laughs> there, you know. there we go just there pizza. Pizza. So, so you should just time. have a pizza as the base yes exactly yeah. that's what pizza box sewer lead yes. oh my god and then the yeah. arc for their frontage should be just a slice out of the pizza so, oh my god mind yeah. <laughs> right moving away from the Teenage Mutant Ninja troll Ken mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons had a massive yes. announcement, a massive yeah. announcement this week so last week uh, Wizards of the Coast announced a whole bunch of stuff for Magic the Gathering and all sorts of different things but the big thing was for what's happening with Dungeons and Dragons right. now everyone will know that 5th edition has been around for quite a while now uh, mm. and has become something of a monolith um, but it is coming back in 2024 with not as they would call it a new edition mm-hmm. uh, but what they announced as one d uh, so one d d is not going to be a new edition as i was saying although i don't think that's going to stick people are just going to call this 5.5 mm. um, and it will be then iterated from that point on 
with the same core mechanics. So it's a little bit as if things are turning into a little bit of a kind of like living rule book kind of situation in a way. Uh, but that's going to be three new core books that will come out. Uh, but everything that exists so far for D&D 5th edition will all be compatible with what mm. exists. Or so they say. But there we go. Um, the big news that came out of this is that they're going to be doing exactly what they did with D&D Next, which was the move from 4th edition into 5th, where over the next couple of years, so we've still got two years to go for this, they're going to be doing a whole bunch of playtest material that people can dive into, download for free, play using DMD Beyond and all that kind of good stuff, and feedback to Wizards of the Coast about what they like, what they don't like, and what that could be changed and all that kind of stuff as well. The first set of um, announcements that came out as part of the playtest were linked to character creation. Mm -hmm. So as anyone who has looked at uh, Tasha's, which was one of the um, supplements that came out over the last couple of years, they are doing something where they're taking away stat bonuses being linked to your race and effect, uh, and as you would normally expect with D&D. Mm -hmm. Instead, that is now going to be tied directly into your backgrounds, and backgrounds are going to have a much bigger part of character creation. Okay. So in 5th edition, backgrounds were kind of there just to give you some skills and give you a little bit of a role-playing sort of um, cue as to what you were before you became an adventure. That's now becoming a much bigger part of how you create your character because this means that you could create a dwarf, an elf, an orc, uh, uh, an eladrin, a human, anything like that. And you can tie very specific um, stat bonuses to your character based on what they did because it shouldn't really matter that you are an elf that has always has to have decks. If you led your life as a soldier, maybe you were just a really big buff ass elf. And so strength and constitution are the way that you go, which I think just makes a lot of sense. Uh, and a lot like of people Halder, the fat elf. Exactly, no. Like Halder, the fat elf, yes. <laughs> so that's one of the big things. They're also going to be doing some stuff where they make backgrounds as standard custom. Mm. So you don't choose from a list, although there will be a list that you can pick from. Right. to help new people but you will be encouraged to very very specifically tailor your background to exactly what you want to do so if you wanted to be a sailor you can pick that one but if you wanted to do like a pirate then you can make a background that much much closely suits what you want to do backgrounds will also give you a feat so feats are going to be mandatory for everybody now um mm -hmm. so everyone will get a feat rather than just being a variant human thing or something you choose an alternative to leveling up well that's good it means you can get around Exactly, yes. You'll be if able to have, potter around. If you didn't have any feet, you wouldn't get very far, would you? Well, maybe you want to see a wheel here. You could have been a warforged with a wheel, yeah, but there we go. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that's been tied into this as well, uh, but it's basically been designed so that you can create the hero that you want and not feel restricted by the yeah. mechanics as they sit. Okay. Another big thing as well that they have changed is a few mechanical tweaks here and there. This is going to mean... Something to D&D players. Everyone's played D&D, &D, right? Everyone knows about this. So critical hits have had a massive change. Now, everyone has always gone with the idea that critical hits apply to pretty much everything in combat, which isn't shouldn't really be the case. It only really applies to a certain amount of things. So now only weapons and unarmed strikes will do critical hits. Everything else will just be based on its normal damage scale. Okay? No critical so that ma magical damage. So no so. critical magical damage. And no, and this is the big one, no paladins using smite to obliterate things in one go. <laughs> this, sounds, this sounds like total b**** to me. Who, who, wants, who wants to be a wizardy character? That's like, like I, 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 can't, I can't turn you into a crispy pile of ash in one to, blast. Because you are already more powerful than everybody else yeah. in the party put together. Fair, so. <laughs> all, all you do is you go in and you cast sleep on the room and then your party just Everyone murders everybody. And murder because yeah. it is the most ridiculous thing in the world ever, sleep. Yeah, I have had yeah. many an encounter ruined yeah. by sleep. Um, but and it doesn't also, seem very epic. Sleep. But they're sleep. also they're that's also, no that's no wait that's no more epic than getting a big fireball and going juicy. I, Done. I, I, I think it sounds pretty cool, but <laughs> <laughs> they're also changing things that inspiration is going to be a much bigger part of DD. So inspiration was something that could be given by DMs to a player if they did something cool. Now, whenever you roll a natural 20, whatever it's for, you will get an inspiration. So it means that you're always going to be have the, have the ability to bring out that clutch advantage. At the right moment, roll 2d20 and pick the highest, which I think is pretty awesome as well. Uh, what else have they done? Oh, my God. Yes, another big thing for critical hits, and then I will stop talking about this because there is way too much stuff to dive into. <laughs> Monsters can no, now no longer crit. So 
a dragon can't now crit you and destroy you in one go. One, one shot you. That's can't probably one a good but thing. They're, but they're massive. How this can is, that yeah. be? Yeah. This, is, this is tied into the fact that at low levels, a bugbear could actually probably kill a wizard immediately if they rolled a 20, right? <laughs> Which is very good for, like, for not putting them all asleep and exactly. murdering them in their beds. I know! Yeah, yeah. Not having <laughs> that critical magic damage, man. However, they're going to put much more focus on recharge abilities for monsters, which are those big things that dragons do, like dragon's breath and all that kind of stuff. So there's going to be a big focus on DMs being in control of that and not just one-shotting players. So they have tweaked a whole bunch of different things when it comes to mm-hmm. gameplay to try and make it a little bit more open for everybody, a little bit more in line with how people actually play their games and all that kind of stuff. Now, obviously, all of this stuff that exists at the moment is subject to change. That's what a yeah. playtest is for. Um, and... From what happened between 4th and 5th, we created effectively, possibly the best version, in quotes, version of D&D that has ever existed. It certainly appears that way when it comes to the streaming services and all that kind of thing that are churning out actual plays at a rate of knots. Um, But yes, you can have your say and say what you think and dive in and have a, you know, have a, a, a moment to play out your games as different heroes with all these different rules and then feed into what happens with D&D 5.5. It's 5.5. There we go. And if uh, <laughs> if you're not interested in the playtesting, if you're just going to be waiting a couple of years for mm. the new edition to come out, fear not because they're still producing content in the meantime and oh, it's yes. all going to be backwards compatible as well. It is, yes. Which means right. if you fancy venturing into some of the new realms that are mm. just about to appear, mm. they're not going to be all disappearing in yeah. two years' time, yeah. uh, which is uh, very handy because things like Dragonlance is finally yes. going to be coming. So the big one, <laughs> next mm. to Forgotten Realms, I think Dragonlance and Kryn mm. is probably the next biggest one for everyone to dive into. Uh, Dragonlance is coming to the tabletop as a new supplement called Shadow of the Dragon Queen. Uh, this is going to come with the Kenda as a race for to choose from, plus new backgrounds, including the Knights of Sola- Solomania mm. <laughs> and the Mages of High Sorcery. Not You'll also find million. a new subclass for the Sorcerer called the Lunar Sorcerer. And the big thing for this one, apart from fighting Lord Soth, of course, <laughs> the, the mightiest death knight that has ever the, existed. The knight of the Black Rose and yeah. happiest death knight ever. Some, <laughs> it needs some eyebrows just to make him he's a even got the, He's even yeah. got nearly bat wings going on there. <laughs> on channel, so, yeah. <laughs> um, there is also a, uh, a selection of rules in there for playing out big battles. So d and never really truly been about big battles being yep. played out and using the roleplay system, but they're going to be putting some things into effect here mechanically that allow you to play out these large conflicts that you see within the world of Dragonlance. However, if you want to go down a different route, mm-hmm. they are also producing a new board game, which is called Dragonlance Warriors of Kryn, mm-hmm. which will allow you to play out mm-hmm. the battles from your role-playing mm-hmm. campaigns in a board game separate from what you're doing at the, at the table with your characters and that kind of thing, which I think is a neat little way of tinkering with things and providing you with an alternative. Yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting one. The problem with mass battles being introduced to any RPG is you're yeah. three or four people around a table, and if it's hundreds or thousands of, of fighters aside, what impact are you really going to have? So yeah. you end up having <laughs> to go, well, you're generals or you're this or you're that and, and trying to sort of shoehorn it in that way. So it'll be interesting to see how mass be battles the, work. The best aspect yeah. of this, I think. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. You'd have the, the bestest impact when you whip off your loincloth and then try to crit or hit someone. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't no, 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 I mean, Warren could just because go to... Anchor, because he's a barbarian. So. Because he's a barbarian, he can still <laughs> critical hit. Oh, can, we, oh, can characters still critical yeah, hit? Yeah, then? yeah, yeah, yeah. As long, as long as he hits him with the right club. You yeah, know, oh, uh, yeah. Just has no, magic. no magic. Just, no, no magic. Your, no magic. Your wizard can still critical hit if they bop people with their staff yes. over the side That's of the true. head. Like, bop, yeah. bop, <laughs> until don't that, worry. Until the bugbear stops trying to attack you. Or, a dragon um, can't do it back, though. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> it should also be noted, and you'll have seen it there in the um, with the Dragonlance book, is that they're now doing for the first time. Thank the lords. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank Tiamat. Thank Bahamut. They're now doing digital and physical bundles together now. Nice. So when you buy a physical book, you will get access to the digital versions of it as well, which is just a good way of approaching things, uh, I think. So yes, watch out for that in December. Um, as I say, there's a whole bunch of stuff going to be happening for D&D over the next two years. I'm sure we will definitely talk about it 
<laughs> I will definitely be talking about it, even <laughs> if no one else does. Um, <laughs> D&D is awesome. Very, very cool. Uh, it's nice to see what they're going to be doing with one D&D, D&D 5.5. But yeah, mm-hmm. we'll see how it goes. Interesting stuff. Mm-hmm. And from one massive IP to another free. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we are heading into the wasteland. So Modifius gave us a complete roundup of all of the different releases that are coming out this month, the Fallout Waste and Warfare, and their RPG expansion. And they've got loads of different stuff coming out this month. There's a solar adventure, there's new filthy beasts, and there is a cheeky SDL set for the Brotherhood of Steel coming. So as Jerry's just said at the top, you are going to start off with the mutants that are coming in the Commonwealth itself. So this one, you've got the Death Corps matriarch. So mother has arrived. So we've seen the Death Claws. Mother of the brood is here and she is standing at 68 millimetres tall. She is fast in comparison to her size. She's got nasty claws, filthy teeth. And she is one hell of an apex predator. She should be feared. So the Death Court matriarch is quite cool to be coming. And speaking of territorial beasts, the Yaogwai ambush set is airdropping in as well. And you don't uh, want to be the these <laughs> frenzy ridden native what um, to black bear. No. <laughs> exactly. They are ridiculously territorial. They will unrelentlessly pursue anything. Without discrimination, whether that be a caravan, whether that be some death claws themselves, they are dangerous to say the least. Funnily enough, not with their own kind. So just treat this as a radioactive grizzly bear, I suppose. Um, but it's a uh, really kids, cool not even once. Don't eat too much marmalade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as well as that, we've got the second instalment to the solo adventure that's been releasing as well. So the Unexpected Shepherd Part 2 is out. So this focuses on narrative and decision-making on your own, and you're heading nice. off into Century. So this is a cargo-containerized town, as it were. Um, and you're looking to go after a friend, an old friend of yours called Clancy. So there's three of these in total. This is the second one that's out now. The first one was about 36 pages this one's 40 and you can download from each for four pound third one's out next and the final release this month i really really enjoy um how many of you use their ip for 3d printing as well i think this is a really awesome touch you've got the brotherhood of steel encampment so this is your pop-up outpost as it were your pop-up military outpost just to provide some temporary fortifications so these inside you've got your ham radio You've got your turret and you've got a couple of bodies here and there just to make it uh, at home. Yeah, just just, just to (laughs) scatter around the place just to make it at home. These are all bear-resistant tents, right? (laughs) I'd hope so. I have a lot to put your new space sleep. (laughs) I'm sure bear wouldn't be able to get through that. I mean, how are they going to be able to undo the zip? (laughs) Yes, because of course that's what bears look for, you know, the zip. Yes, well, but hopefully you would be fortified out. with some barbed wire or something to hope keep out the uh, roaming bears. But that's mm-hmm. all. There's a, there's a lot of cool stuff coming out, and I really do like how uh, Edifius are using to produce Fallout stuff over different mediums, not just releasing terrain for everybody to buy. If you want to carry it at home, you can, nice. uh, and as much as you want. The nice thing about that as well is that because even even though it's part of the Hood of Steel themed, that mm-hmm. doesn't look like it couldn't it fit into a bunch of it. You could use that for yeah. some kind of zombie... Oh, yeah, Walking Dead would just be screaming out for it. Oh, yeah. definitely. Oh, I just want to point out as well that we did... A, well, you did an article this week, Free, where you looked at solo games, and there's a little mm-hmm. bit of a chat about Wasteland yeah. Warfare in there and talking a little bit more about it. So mm-hmm. if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about that and a couple of other solo games, make sure to go and check out that article. In fact, you know what? I'll make it easy and I'll put a link down below because everyone's lazy, right? No, yeah. so no so well, I certainly am, sure. yes. <laughs> that is true. Uh, splish Splash, I was taking a bath with Dystopian Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Who so wants yes, to tell me about all the the sea. Get your steampunk uh, rubber duckies ready uh, because, yes, there's going to be a couple of additional <laughs> battle fleets coming out uh, for Dystopian Wars for you to dive into. Um, we start with the Archimedes battle fleet set, which is for those folks in the Enlightened. And this one really, really impressed me uh, because it comes with those really 
cool Archimedes vault ships. We'll get to the other really awesome mm. things in a second. <laughs> but those vault ships are basically, you know, the Tony Stark showing off to everybody style ships of the dystopian wars universe. And they come with those really awesome orbs in the center of them that will generate power and all sorts of magical energies and all that kind of stuff to sort of zap all your foes from around you. You also get loads of additional ships in plastic in addition to the resin one there. But the other very, very cool thing are those assault machines that you see? I think there's some close-ups of them mm. in the article as well. There so is. these are big automata for you to use. So we've seen a couple of automata so far, and we're going to be seeing a few more in a little bit. But these are these very cool insectoid beasts that have been programmed with this almost hunter intelligence to dive under the water and then rise up and basically snip ships in half with those big pincers <laughs> that you see at the front of them. Um, so yeah, you can, you can put these together in two different variants, mm -hmm. uh, but both of them are equally as amazing at destroying ships. And I think if you're going to be putting together a fleet, why bother with boats? You can play around with massive, big, submersible oh, no. insects, really. So there we go. Submersible <laughs> insects is not a phrase I would have expected to hear. Last time I seen a water boatman, it didn't look quite like that. <laughs> not more spindly. It was struggling away biting. on the surface. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see how these are going to get painted up. I remember oh, yes. some like colour yeah. flips would look gorgeous on it, just like the pearlescent mm. kind of things blended in with the water. Yeah. It's definitely a way gorgeous. to go for it, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Talking of battle fleets there's also the Mar marina battle fleet set uh, hey, which is equally as awesome. and it comes with colossi not just one colossi you get three of them in this set so these are the marina vitruvian colossuses colossi for you to use in your games which come with a variety of different weapons including one weapon which is called a magna axe which i think sounds amazing like a magna rail axe so basically it's just used for detonating ships and then blasting things from afar they also come with those really cool beam guns that basically create icebergs in the ocean Ooh. so if you've got an enemy fleet coming towards you bring these icebergs up in front of them and basically shatter all of their plans oh that's they cool titanic all i was going to say it, it, adds, it adds a whole other level for the conspiracy theorists titanic <laughs> idea it was actually taken out by beam wielding giant exactly. robots well and, and you're talking about really awesome paint jobs Imagine what you could do with these. Paint them up in like really cool bronze or copper or something. Have a little bit of verdigris here and there. Put seaweed mm. on top of them and work all the sort of oceany oh, elements yeah. into them. You could even go down the chrome route and then do sort of like a reflected sea uh, on their sort of underside mm. as well. That could be quite nice to try and I have a go not. at. It'd be really hard, but you could have a go at it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, again, falling into the category of why have boats when you can have massive walking monstrous giant constructs that can destroy things, but there we go. <laughs> the, the good thing about them is they don't sink like boats because they're already also, standing they on, are already the standing on the floor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And they're going to be hard plastic then as well. I mean, they are going to be hard plastic, as you can see here, yeah. Um, the other thing as well is that you can now turn everything into a boat sword, so you can go full on... Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Pacific, Pacific Rim, Rim yeah. Full on Pacific Rim, yeah. Was it a sword cool. or was it a uh, baseball bat? <laughs> It had yeah. a similar effect to a blunt <laughs> object. But yeah, Very the Macarena true. fleet and that big <laughs> smashing, smashing the axe is good because it's, it's a gun axe. It's a gun and an axe at the same oh. time. Oh. Yeah. Which is, you know, obviously a little homage to uh, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, of course. Vampire he, he, yeah. Well, yeah. Wild West Exodus, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln uses a gun axe also as well. Does, yes, yeah. yeah. So but don't yeah, know if that's where they got the idea yeah. from, but uh, I, Maybe. I, I like it. Do you shoot uh, first and then hit it with the axe? Or do you hit it with the axe and then when it's I think you well smashed? Find the axe and then blast. And then fire, yeah. just removing yeah. the rest of the ship. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's probably a good way to go. Turn it into splinters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then capping things off is possibly uh, the fleet that I would go for because I quite like the whole Nordic theme. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got some little additional bonuses uh, for the Scandinavians. Uh, so you've got this little uh, frontline squadron, which comes with a few more ships to kind of bolt things out within your force on the tabletop and help screen those bigger ships as well. Mm. So yes, some really awesome stuff coming up for Dystopian Wars in September. Pre-orders should be up very, very soon. I um, like the I like the fact that the walking things, the big creatures and stuff are adding a sort of a dimension of height to this yes. as well. Because yes. mm. the ships are all quite low to the ground. Well, very true. low to the sea. Mm. Oh, uh, so that adds uh, a height to it, which is cool. That's yes. true, yeah. 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 Somebody, Sorry, go on, go on. Free. I was going to say, somebody needs to make a little tiny Dr. Evil head coming up from the water or something. <laughs> Dr. Evil sub would be... Yes. <laughs> just find two more right. sharks yeah. just on the top of the head <laughs> of one of the robots. We yeah. need a giant enemy crab. 
Yes. Do. <laughs> so you can flip right. over and then yeah. do massive damage to it. That's the, yeah. That is such an old meme. Oh my god! <laughs> it's a beautiful, beautiful thought. We already know that giant crabs exist within the dystopian uh, age, anyway, because we've seen them. True. So back. somebody's bound to go one step further and yeah. make and uh, some sort of Rubu crab out of it. Especially as they're sort of merging the worlds of mythos and dystopian wars, as, as they've teased on their Facebooks Dang. and stuff. You know, there's, as you say, there's a big Cthulhu type crab in that, in that network as well. Yeah. Click clap. So, yeah, very cool. Stuff. Well, that'd be cool Ooh. seeing these fighting Cthulhu beasties. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah, yeah. it would just be like Pacific. It would be point. Pacific. Yeah, it would. Yeah. <laughs> Fear. Fear the giant octopus. Yeah. Go Cephs. That's all I'm saying. They don't have to worry about being submerged. They're pre submerged already and they can breathe underwater. And in the vacuum of space, humanity's on its way out, people. <laughs> Told you here first. Why sell for the lesser evil? Get on board with the Elder Gods immediately. Uh, right, back to the wonderful world of RPGs, though. Yeah, RPG I'm, I'm Marvel. We are indeed. I'm still thinking about uh, Ben saying steampunk, steampunk rubber ducky at this point as well. I just <laughs> take that out of my head. So last year we heard that Marvel, yes, Marvel, the big old Disney Corporation, are going to bring out their very own RPG. Oh, it's not indie players. then. Oh. No, this is far from an indie cherry. So you can play as whoever you want, yeah. whoever you want in the Marvel Universe, including your own bespoke character. And they've been dropping in surprises and updates since they released their beta rules and playtest rules earlier on in the year. So now that playtesting has been tweaked and played around with, they've announced their first two books coming for what is called Marvel, Multi Marvel Multiverse RPG. So on July the 23rd, 2023, we will get introduced to the core book and the first adventure book to jump into. So this is diving into Earth 616 universe. The core book is going to have everything you need, regardless if you're a newbie or a vet. So it will include the combat. You have a huge bulk of content with character profiles, whether that be heroes or villains. You'll get an insight to the superhero abilities that you can get, and as well as their dice 616 system, which is honestly just using three six sided dice, which seems quite simple. So you've got the Cataclysm of K, mm. and that is bringing of six different interconnected adventures if you want to go somewhere after the core book. And that is with well, obviously Kang the Conqueror and uh, his menacing through time and what he does. So you can jump into this straight after the core book if you really want and continue with the characters that you built. Or if you do want to create someone new, say, for example, you might just be Spider-Man on his own and not quite up to the contest. So uh, you may as well hash out someone make, new I'm before not, you can make, make to the contest. Yeah, yeah no, not okay. the rubber one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's really cool, really nice to see it coming out. They've got some really good names on it. You've got people that have put into artwork in the front cover from DC Comics. Uh, Marvel Comics, Dark Wars, um, and they're set to release next summer. So we've still got quite a Very long cool. time. Loads of superheroes on the table at the moment. There is loads of different images out there if you do want to have a look at how the playtest works and what they've teased so far, because it is Marvel. Just so uh, happens to land in the middle of the ongoing phases of the MCU. It's as well, like it's of. part of a plan, isn't it, Ben? Yeah. It's like it's slots so. in some. I there are rumours that Kang yeah. might be the big boss for. Uh, I wonder where that is. Mm -hmm. so, that was interestingly, though, as well. RPG. I was looking at the. <laughs> The uh, Cataclysm of Kang co Kang cover. Yes. Right. The characters on the front of that. Yes. Are interestingly the characters that they're moving towards introducing as slightly more main characters within what's happening with the MCU. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So you've got Doctor Strange and Falcon, Spider like Captain, Falcon, America, Captain, Captain America, America, yeah, yep. and all that kind of stuff. So maybe that's a little kind of nod as to what they're going to be doing in uh, the near future. When it comes to the MCU movies as well, but perhaps, perhaps, it, perhaps. It does make me question as well with the amount of content that Marvel comes out with anyway and how quick. I wonder how fast these books are going to come out. So if you're invested, are they going to be churning out content like they already are on every other different platform? Or are we going to have to wait a year each time they announce it? It's an interesting more. one. I, I don't know. Uh, it depends how quickly people get on board with it. The fact it's still in beta, and I think you can still sign up for the beta. You buy it, you buy it. buy the beta, yeah. yeah. I remember now, this is all you coming can. back to me. It's it's a weird beta where you have to pay <laughs> yes. to, to fix their game. Oh, oh, already the hatred's setting in on that one because I'm not a fan of that. Uh, unless at the end of the beta, they supply you with the actual proper 
finished edition for free since you've already bought it and worked on it. I would assume um, so. It was like early access. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be the oh, case. I, don't, I, yeah. I think you're buying that book again when it finally gets fixed. I think so. Um, but if the people pick it up and run with it quickly enough, I think you could see in a, a season-like type of thing, multiple. Yeah. Uh, the whole point of an RPG for a company like this will be to iterate and to get new books out because otherwise if they just do a book and you're done then that's all they're selling they're selling once to everybody we're yeah. selling once to one person because the rest of people don't need it so they need to be churning through content like you wouldn't believe you i'm looking forward to seeing that here yeah yeah you can still oh. buy you can still buy the playtest book by the way for seven that- pounds Oh, there we go. It's, it's not as terrible, but still fairly terrible that you have to pay okay. to fix their game. Um, yeah, true. we'll, we'll yeah. look forward to Dazzler and the <laughs> the, the European Dazzler's tour amazing. she goes on. That's yeah, if, if people are unaware of Dazzler, you should look her up. But she, her, her super ability is to play with lights. Uh, and for a long time, she was just doing her own light shows at her own gigs because she's also mm-hmm. a singer. Almost so, as, uh, it's pay, almost as colourful as Jubilee. To, to like fire lasers <laughs> oh. and stuff at me when I can yeah. just do all that for myself. No. Most spectacular <laughs> disco effects going on. I am very interested in playing group in this for saying nothing, but I am group the whole time. I am pretty good. That's yeah. It'll be fascinating to see where Marvel goes. Know, yeah. Did you know that he, uh, Vin Diesel, insists on doing every single voice line for Groot, even though they could so, literally just. But you've you got know, to put the inflection into it. You've got, you've to, got you, to. You have to know true. when. Yeah. You have to emote I as an actor. Yeah. Vin Diesel emoting. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. No, he has been in those amazingly cerebral Fast and Furious movies. Oh, <laughs> yeah, of course. can't forget about those. It, no. also, it also means he needs to get paid. That's true. Yes, <laughs> that's true. Yes, he, uh, yeah. He gets, he gets group no, royalties, but he wants more, obviously. Yes, so. no. It's because he completely cares about group. That's what it yeah. means. Happy days, right? <laughs> Leaving the multiverse behind and going to have a look at some accursed cultists. Yeah. Uh, so stepping into the grim dark universe of one hundred forty thousand, we're going to be looking at what's coming up for pre-orders and also a couple of bonus things as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we start with chaos. Who are going to be getting two new sets of plastic models coming out this weekend for pre order? Uh, they'll be available on stored on tabletop. Pow, 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 pow. Um, so, yes, the first set is the Accursed Cultists, which are cultists that have been given gifts by the Chaos Gods and turned into all sorts of strange and warped creatures on the tabletop. Um, sadly, you can't make a legal all cultist army for one of 40,000 for one reason or another. But if you wanted to add Shame. some weird and wonderful characters into the mix you can do for these so if you wanted to use these just as fodder to throw in front of your chaos space marine legionnaires and you can indeed do so i quite like the designs on these and how they actually mirror interestingly some of the cultists that already exist in plastic Mm. so you could almost do a before and after with them i also think that the uh, design team really went to town with how can we really screw up this person uh, and did some very interesting things with the way that the different mutations are popping out of them and all that kind of thing and you can see how they're tied to different goals from the chaos pantheon and all that kind of stuff as well as well as some additional awesome undivided stuff mm. at the same time that is a freaky looking unicorn at the bottom that wasn't it <laughs> a freak a freak a corn <laughs> yeah uh, there is also this set of equally mutated individuals uh, although they would say that these really are gifts uh, so this is your chaos space marine possessed unit that has been mm-hmm. updated for the new edition mm-hmm. uh, a lot of hoofs on the display apparently when you get possessed um, but you've got them all in so- all sorts of strange and gribbly um, uh, concoctions here as you can see uh, a few to use on the tabletop uh, you know they might be a little bit harder to control than your normal chaos space marines and very focused about combat but you know stick them in a rhino send them forward unleash them on the enemy and see how they do. Um, you could also paint them up, obviously, in all sorts of different ways to match the chaos god that you most appreciate. <laughs> Stick them yeah. in a rhino. I'd hate to see the state of that rhino after that <laughs> bunch got on. <laughs> I've got to clean this. <laughs> it's, it's like the old problem with going berserkers. You would always either have them in a rhino or have them just on the other side of the battlefield with Karn behind them because the last thing you wanted was them accidentally battering yeah, seven shades true. of chaos yeah. out of your own men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, yes, so you've got those two units for the Chaos Space Marines. On the other side of things, for the Chaos Demons, which is mm-hmm. obviously related, uh, we also have this new combat patrol uh, for the Chaos Demons. This one focused around Corn. Um, you get a whole bunch of blood letters in the set alongside those flesh hounds 
pounds of corn. You've got your blood crushers at the back as well. And there's also your plastic, um, I think they're called blood takers mm. leading the way as well. It would have to be blood related, of course. Um, I think if you're going to be diving into painting an army for chaos, uh, this is probably a pretty good one to start with because you could do the whole thing with contrast paints and it would look blooming amazing. Yeah, it would. Uh, but yeah, just get down that wraith bone spray and then just start going to town with all those contrast paints. Spray do a little bit of red. blending. Oh, <laughs> like spray them red. Yeah. Or just away. spray them red, paint some black, and then you're done. Oh, so look at you with your painting <laughs> extra stuff after you've You've got to get to three colours up, Jerry. Jeez. Uh, you've got to do black and bronze. And then away you go. <laughs> look at I think the Brass. hounds is the best thing here. They look epic. The hounds. I do like the hounds. Look, yeah. at how they're, they're look at how they're running. That looks amazing. <laughs> it's all about good. that movement. Yeah. <laughs> Still, Still hung up. Weirdly, Still hung they're up. also the probably the most recent kiss yes, out of all of those. Because yeah, yeah. Um, the blood letters and the juggernauts of corn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> regardless of what GW want to call them now, are very, very old kits. So old, yeah. I own some. Um, yeah. Oh, they're, they're yeah. called they're called juggernaut. They're blood crushers on juggernauts. Oh, yeah, there sure. Whatever they are, GW. <laughs> are they blood a, layers on Can you get the hounds as a separate release? Yeah. You can buy them separately as well, yeah. Oh, I'm going to our store and I'm going to buy a box of those because <laughs> I could use those in all sorts of games. You could, yeah. They're very cool. It could be all sorts of creepy hounds for all sorts of different things. Um, you could be the key master and be hunted by those. Um, I'm going to have, I'm so, gonna have his, I'm yeah. going to put them hounds into my saga army. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the, saga age of <laughs> yeah. the, the interesting thing about this army as well is that you buy it for 40k. Mm. It also works equally as well for Age of Sigma. That's a good so point. Good good point. Got to remember that. There we go. Really, you're Health saving money by buying it. A great way to dive in. Yes, you're saving money. You're saving money. <laughs> Um, but yes, this is coming out alongside the release of the full codex. Mm. So you'll now also be able to buy, buy the Chaos Demons Codex, which comes with its either full art, art version or the standard version, whichever you want to go for. And then in addition to that, you'll also be able to pick up some that probably won't last on the shelves for very long, Chaos Dice uh, to use in your forces. They've all been done in undivided black, so there'll be no warring between which units use them on the tabletop. So there we go. Shocking. Use Shocking them in stuff. your games. But that is not all when it comes to what's happening with Games Workshop at the moment. It, it could have, have been all, but... It could have been all, announcement. but they, they just don't stop. So, yeah, no. I obviously had to talk about these. So well, these are the... Again. <laughs> did we, though, Ben? Did we? Yes, yes, we had. Yes, okay, we do, right, because just this is me shopping for my new army. So so these are the Brocker. Oh, no, sorry. Wait a minute. These are called the Brockier, uh, which are your Brockier Thunderkin or Thunderkin uh, for your uh, Leagues of Votan on the tabletop. These are your heavy weapon troops for use in 140,000 with the Squat Not Squats. Uh, so they come with a whole bunch of awesome high-powered weaponry and also come on stilts. stilts. Um, so, yes, this is the way that the Leagues of Votan have kind of retrofitted <laughs> their... Uh, <laughs> or in baby carriers. Why, why, you how why would you get yourself stilts that are really just like a stiletto heel? Is he a bit bouncier? Because is that what it does? They're like Edge of Tomorrow <laughs> exosuits oh, in a bouncy. way, basically. Oh. Yeah, so they allow you to clap, like run along quicker and all that kind of thing. So, yes, they are your big exosuits, or as someone said... Why did you uh, put my dread knight on uh, a hot wash? Um, so, shrunk yes. it. <laughs> shrunk they, it put, yes. they put them on stilts because they were insecure about being Exactly. Stilt. They That's wanted the a couple reason. more inches of height. Yeah. Um, so they come with really awesome weapons. So you can either run with them with kind of like Gatling style weapons, <clears> or you can use these kind of like ion beam weapons, which are again, sort of related to their sort of mining and that kind of stuff that they do, which obviously goes into the whole dwarven theme. Although they've never called them dwarves, of course. They also come with those goggles that allow them to see through terrain in our in, in able, uh, which allows them to see minerals and stuff in the rock, but also means it's very good for seeing where enemies are on the other side of terrain. I don't know what that means in game. I guess it means that they'll be able Negate, to reduce your cover, cover probably. saves, probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yes, you've got some really cool looking um, uh, troopers there. I think are quite nice. They're pretty um, sweet, actually. Looking at them. Yeah, I, I think they're possibly they're, some of the best stuff they've done. For they're way better than the Dread Knight because the Dread Knight has you way up high as a big yeah. target. This yeah. you're still pretty down to the ground. Moving oh yeah, ahead. I think even with their stilts, they're still shorter than a human. Yes. <laughs> so, but yeah, looking very cool. Again, giving off those kind of live, die, repeat, Edge of Tomorrow style vibes. If you like that as well, i will be interested to see if the set comes with more head options. Because uh, mm-hmm. while I like the tiny um, Tom Cruise. Yeah, little tiny Tom Cruise. <laughs> well, I mean, you mean the real Tom Cruise? Oh, yeah. One to one skill Tom Cruise. Yeah, one to one. Yeah. Yeah. He'll ruin a lot of sofas jumping up and down in one of these. Yeah. Uh, but yes, so you've got the Brocky Thunderkin there for the Leagues of Votan, which is coming mm. very soon. Also, if you're interested in the Leagues of Votan, 
and you have Warhammer Plus. Uh, there was actually a uh, video that came out this week over on Warhammer TV, which talks all about the the law behind the Leagues of Votan. So if you're interested in getting the heads up on what that's all about, go and check that out. There's also one on Crooped Lloyd. Um, oh. if, if you want my login details, sorry, Game Workshop, if you want my login details, Lloyd, you can go and watch that if you'd like. So there we go. Uh, very nice. Are they running? We just have Are they running? Well, I hope so. The, the, the pictures move. So, yeah. Do, do they move fast? Do they, do not, they look like they're fast? No. no. Oh, yeah. dear me. Yeah. Get some skates for the crew. Yeah. yeah. And also, to finish things off, uh, one of the uh, original kill teams that came out during the last edition of the game that I really, really liked, but basically vanished into the void, uh, mm-hmm. is the Lucidian Star Striders. They're coming back as a separate plastic kit alongside the Galapox Infected, which we'll see in a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, so be able to pick these up and they will have new rules for use in Kill Team as part of the, uh, of course, because of course this was coming, the Kill Team Annual for 2022, which will have all of the updated rules for using them and a bunch of the other uh, Kill Teams that were released over subsequent box sets of the Stack King that we've seen in the last while. So if you wanted to go down the route of having a very over-the-top Baroque-style Imperial Force, you can do. They all look amazing. Fly. And I want I want to use them for an inquisitorial warband. I just think they're gorgeous. They're very oh, yeah. 1930s Flash Gordon. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes. Yeah. With their mad helmets and stuff going on. There's, there. there's even an assassin with space buns. So, you know, there's yeah, three the in back. miniature form on the they're table. They're very so. sassy. <laughs> uh, and then there's also the Galapox Infected, as you were looking at us there. Mm. So if you wanted to go down the route of having some very, very alien sort of uh, Nurgle creatures in your army, then you can play around with that as well. Flies. Flies. The sign of Nurgle. Yeah. So, yeah, very cool stuff there as well. So, yes, two new kill teams, a new new annual that is coming out. That's what happens when you talk about Nurgle too many times. Mm. Uh, You dive into and have fun with if you play kill team as your game of choice. So, yes, watch out for those in the near future. We'll no lot. We'll no doubt talk about them in the in, in I, I imagine, shows. I imagine. Although I might just breeze over them because I often do this now. I just go, oh, we talked about that before. I'm just going to move yeah. it out of the way. So it's, it's, it, you know, it, it's not a dwarf <laughs> or a space dwarf. It's not a dwarf do we need to talk about it again? Space. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Let's revisit the dwarves one more time. Right. Right. That's... Now for my lecture on the leagues of Votan. Settle in, everybody. Oh dear, we'll be right back <laughs> to finish off the show after this. <laughs> Okay, folks, we're back to round out the show, and uh, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of Kickstarters. But first, 3D Printing Ben hmm. also managed to sneak a Kickstarter in here. You cheated. Yes, I have. <laughs> Man. Uh, so this is Conquest Creations, who have done a whole bunch of different things over the last little while. They do YouTube videos and all sorts of different things like that. They play battle games and that kind of thing, too. <laughs> but I had to sneak this Kickstarter in because it is all 3D printing, and it's very, very cool. And a bunch of the people in the community went, hey, Ben, have you seen this? Why did they say that, Ben? <laughs> oh, because, because, as you're about to see, it might look very familiar. Mm. So <laughs> so this is what they have called the Kingdom of Saxonia Terrain oh. Range, which is all 3D printable stuff for playing out not battles in Rohan. Right. Uh, okay. yeah. But could yeah. equally be used for Viking encounters and all sorts of other Dark Age battles on the tabletop. Uh, they have designed it so it's all entirely module, as you, modular, as you see here. Um, so you can break down the different elements from the bases through to the buildings, through to the roofs and all that kind of stuff. All of the interiors, therefore, are detailed. So you can dive in and play around with them, which I think is quite nice. You also have wall sections, scatter, and all that kind of stuff as well. The biggest thing for me are these actual large sort of um, sections of fortress wall. Oh, nice. Because they are big old chunks anyway that look fantastic for playing games on them with plenty of game space on the top, which is always quite nice to see. But then you have the ability to just remove those sections and put in the blasted sections instead. So if you wanted to play out a proper kind of deeping wall situation on the tabletop, then you could, of course, do that. Or maybe the assault on Edras itself as well. You can go down mile fort. Exactly. Yeah, a Roman Marfort as well. Easily done. The other thing I like to think of, of uh, when it comes to using the, this terrain, maybe going down the route of something Dark Ages or a saying, playing out a proper Beowulf style uh, engagement in that hall. That is definitely like the Hall of Heirut and yeah. High Throthgar. You know, so you could do a monster smashing through the gates there. The gates actually move in the train, which is quite nice. They actually have some movement to them. Very cool. <laughs> uh, and then you can have them, you know, the monster surging up the middle and fighting everybody 
everybody as Beowulf strips off and gets naked and starts <laughs> fighting uh, Grendel. Although that's we know, probably, get your bonus. that's only in the uh, Ray Winston version. Oh no, actually no, he does strip oh. off in the myth, doesn't he? I, I do think, like yeah. the fact that they have different stages of destroyed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So as each of the different wall sections take damage, you could put the little bits and pieces in here and there, which I think is quite nice. And you can actually add some narrative elements to the game and all that kind of stuff. Narrative and especially element. if especially if you're playing skirmish games as well, you've not got a large figure count. So it's not like a massive hassle to move a couple of things just to replace different pieces of terrain, which I think is quite good. Um so yeah, they've definitely put in the work when it comes to creating a whole bunch of different terrain sections for it's playing. Nice games. and deep. I could get a uh, yeah. Kings of War tray on that. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, Especially yeah. if it was like a um a ranged unit or something easily. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Anything at all to defend my my keep with. Exactly. Because normally oh, you've got yeah. very small walls yes. uh, on fortresses yeah. and, and that sort of thing, and it's a pin in the backside. Like to one man holding a section of wall yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. I, uh, I was uh, trying to see if the hall in the middle had doors that you can smash open with not arable. <laughs> that is the coolest entrance ever. <laughs> exactly. So, <yeah. laughs> I used to do that in Halo. There used to be a level where you could walk through a set of doors in a garage, and every time yeah. I'd, I'd run through it, I'd go, Aragorn! <laughs> you have to. You must. So there we go. Shocking. <laughs> Absolutely shocking. Yeah. So is this their extent of their range, or is this the current thing that they're uh, So this is what they've mostly been working on over the last couple of months, and have obviously bought it to Kickstarter for you to go and back and, mm-hmm. and, and have fun with all STL files and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But as I say, they have been doing stuff for a little while, and they have worked as a vendor for a bunch of other 3D printers, uh, well, 3D sculptors in the past as well. So mm-hmm. over on their web store, they have a bunch of armies that are sort of not Middle-earthy, I suppose you'd say. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you're interested in diving into playing around with dwarves and sea Siege towers and Easterlings oh. and Orcs and all that kind of stuff. They have put together some really awesome uh, armies for you to play around with and, and, and tinker with and stuff. Um, as I say, this is uh, kind of like their big new thing that they're working on, which is mm-hmm. obviously the Rohan esque terrain, the Kingdom of Saxonia. Sorry, <laughs> but as I say, they have worked with a whole bunch of different uh, creators in the past to create some really nice armies that kind of filled in the gaps for a lot of people who were missing stuff during the period of the Hobbit and all that kind of thing when Tr- everyone during the dark really times. Wanted- yeah, <laughs> during the dark times where everyone wanted real armies, not fine cast armies <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So they've really delved, delved in to create a, a section of fun kits for you to use um, all, of, all over the shop. And there's no reason why you have to use them for Middle Earth. You could use them for all sorts of different games. Mm. And if you're interested in seeing what the terrain actually looks like when it's being painted and all that kind of stuff, they have actually put together this painting guide, as you can see here, which goes through how to bring them to life. As you would imagine, dry brushing. Lots of dry brushing, please. Do a little bit more dry brushing. It's the way to go. So there we go. <laughs> I will say I've done a jerry can on doing effective brickwork, which is much faster than his. Well, there we go. Mm-hmm. I'd you could go and watch a jerry can saying, instead. Yeah. 100%. Okay. Definitely go watch me do that. It's great. And very messy as well. De- deliciously satisfying. But well, if you want to do that, come on over to On Tabletop and join the Cult of Games for yeah. a month for free. And you can you know watch what? Jerry doing his walls. I'll mm. put a link in the description so you can click it and you'll see a little find, thing. Find there. my walls. So, yeah. It's interesting stuff. Uh, it'd be fascinating to see where they go from here because yes. obviously that's a very specific part of Middle Earth or Saxonia. Um, <laughs> so presumably, but you could use that in anything. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. P- oh, perfect yeah. for Dark Agey. Yeah, because uh, it's sort of like saga. The whole Rohan thing was all Dark Agey looking to begin with. But it was all based on Saxon and Viking uh, mythology. Yeah. Yeah. I would say it was, yeah. it was Tolkien was uh, attempting to build his own uh, mythology. To build his own mythology, yeah, because mm-hmm. uh, yeah. there was so little going on. It was around. robbed from us by the England. Normans, the bastard. What he said. <laughs> and, and in case you're wondering, Normans slash people in France, they still feel that way to this day. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I hopefully we'll see them. I mean, obviously, with Gondor at war coming up, and sorry, the Battle of Osgiliath coming up, and all mm. that kind of thing. Maybe we'll see some more stuff in the future that's kind of based around that. Uh, or maybe they'll spread their wings and do something a little bit different to match some of the other smaller factions. Well, that's what I'm thinking because they're sitting there with things like um, the Easterlings. Mm-hmm. So, having a load of themed Easterling terrain. That would be cool because that doesn't exist currently. Doesn't so, exist in any yeah. way, shape, or form. Yeah. And would be a very different look Yay. to your tabletop as well. Uh, yeah. All that sort of tenting and the like some, going uh, on. Mama kill on the go. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting yeah. little 3D printlet for the kingdom of Saxonia slash. Tiny one with big dreams. There we go. <laughs> big dreams. Yeah. Um, it's nice to see um, them also 
doing the the painting side as well. So if you yes. are diving in and grabbing that, you can follow at least have a, a or follow rough, Jerry's guy. A rough idea. Yeah, follow <laughs> follow mine for the stonework. Uh, like yeah. I say, it's much easier and looks better because yeah, <laughs> it, it really does. It looks great. If I do say so myself, and I do frequently <laughs> all the time. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in checking out conquest creations uh you can go and have a look at what they've got on offer i think they also do pro painted in that they're painting them and that makes them a professional and therefore you can buy your fully painted. you pay someone nothing. for it yeah yeah, yeah. um expensive but if your uh, time is money friend as i believe the goblins tell me so if you want to go that way you can get those as well did you win one of our prizes find out on our prize claim center over at ontabletop.com here we list all our previous prizes and those who have won if you see your username, fill out the form to claim your prize. All prizes must be claimed within 30 days. Okay, then to wrap up the show, we have a couple of Kickstarters. And the first one is a little small one and a touch of the grim dark, because everybody's fond of that. So, Ben, what are we looking at? Uh, so this is the first Kickstarter from Victoria Miniatures. Uh, a lot of people will know about Victoria Miniatures. They've been in the hobby for a while because they do amazing alternative options um, for the Imperial Guard and all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in diving in and picking up some really, really awesome uh, regiments and all sorts of different things that are akin to those of the past that everybody loved, mm. you know, pith helmets, they've got them by the bucket load. I want to go and check those out. But their Kickstarter has been focused on creating a set of halfling snipers, mm. uh, the bagshot row snipers, which I thought was really cool, <laughs> uh, that are going to be used for, well, not bagshot row, but you know what I mean. It's going to be used for your games because, of course, these are adjacent uh, to Middle Earth. Of course they are. Uh, so, yes, you get a set uh, where well, you can choose, actually. You can either go with uh, 3D printed versions of these halfling snipers to use mm. in your games, so you can just work on them at home, or you can go with the plastic CO-cast version of them if you prefer the physical medium. Mm. Uh, either way, you get a whole bunch of different bits and pieces to make your halfling snipers with. Uh, you get all the bodies and the legs and the arms and all that kind of stuff and the weapons. But then you can choose from a bunch of different heads that have also been unlocked through the stretch goals and included for free. So you can have an all-male all squad. You can have an all-female squad. You can mix and match. You also get Sergeant Bamboo Ball Roarer, or Ball oh. Roar, sorry, uh, who <laughs> no doubt uh, created uh, a game of golf in the grimdark future when beating <laughs> up some snotlings or something. Uh, so, yes, a very cool-looking miniature there that has got lots so of happy. epic movie star vibes. I really thought that was quite nice. There's also the addition of the gas masks as well. So if you want to go down the route of having them fighting in some horrible, nasty location, then you can do as well. I think the miniatures themselves are amazing. Mm. Uh, they have put together some really fun little bits and pieces with the sculpts. So you'll notice that all of them are in the midst of doing something. Yes. Uh, some of them are waiting to take a shot. Some of them are reloading. Some are pointing out enemies. Others are eating breakfast or second breakfast or maybe even lunch. You've got people with flasks of tea. You've got an open bag of crisps. You've got someone cooking. You've got all sorts of different things in there for people that want to dive in and create a really fun unit of rattlings to use on the tabletop mm. alongside your Aston Militarum slash Imperial Guard. Someone's got a breakfast. sandwich there. And crisps. Someone's also got a sandwich and crisps. Yeah, yeah. Are they crisps in or crisps out? It's always crisps in. So if, they've, <laughs> if, if they've done it wrong, then uh, uh, I don't know. A potato crisp body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say all ten of the bodies are unique sculpts, which yep. is good. So you know repetition yeah. there, and then the the addition of three different head options is nice as well. Yeah. And they have a sort of, I would say, generic looking um, uniform. Mm -hmm. So. Well, they painted them up in this in this blue looking thing here. It could easily be military camo or um, British Army riflemen from sort of the Napoleonic eras. They've got that, or you know, ACW uh, mm -hmm. with the sort of the kepi going on. So that they they fit quite nicely into that little sort of niche, especially for people who want their guard regiments and units to look distinctive and different. But if you're currently running about with a load of uh, Cadians, um they could still fit in there. I will say one thing, uh, and uh, anybody out there who's running a Kickstarter, please listen to me. The reason I have to keep going back to that page is because all page of the pages open. are tiny. <laughs> the video is terrible yeah. uh, as it sort of blurs and jumps through between them so you don't get a real idea of what's going on 
Uh, it just makes me nauseous. And I know yeah. big pictures can be put into Kickstarter because we looked at a Kickstarter a while back we where did. you could click on a leg and they were full size. Yeah. Why people don't want to show off what they're attempting to fund is beyond me. Uh, I can understand if it's a bit like hot garbage and you want people <laughs> to be far away. But these are lovely. See, but these are really nice. Yeah. Show Aww. us the really nice images of yeah. the, you know, what are put image the links underneath the or something. Flask. Yeah. yeah, exactly that. Um, that's my ranting about images over. Um, in a, a similar way You've to... You've become Lloyd. Oh my you God. have, yeah, so I'm sorry. This is weird. Is this yeah. my job? Yeah, yeah it's weird, yeah. No. <laughs> it, it, it kind of is, but you've not been around much. I'm starting to channel my inner, inner Lloyd. <laughs> um, while we were talking about Privateer Press earlier, we were talking about the fact that they're going to be 3D printing and shipping from various places. Yes. This is the same to a certain extent in that they have three venues um, who will be producing the the plastic CO cast models. So there's somebody in the Netherlands, somebody in uh, Oz, and then somebody in the US. So if yeah. you are getting the physical models, if you're, you're not into 3D printing, um, they'll be shipped from somewhere that's relatively close. Yeah, it won't be coming from down under. <laughs> which is yeah. good because Australian Postal Service see any packets marked fragile or miniatures and then just beat them into oblivion. I don't They've know been why. hit by cars. <laughs> I don't know why they hate miniatures yeah. so much, but the Australian Post Office, re they despise resin. The minute they see resin <laughs> in the box, it just gets kicked around for a couple of months and then they send you the shards. So thankfully we could skip Australian Post for once. God bless that. Um, but I think we might see that more and more uh, from companies using little mini yeah. hubs like that um, because cost of shipping is is just not or, or just turning down. to zealot to do everything so yeah. there we go yeah, you know, either <laughs> either or works uh, yeah. but yeah if you're interested in checking out the rattling snipers if you're not already sitting on 40 like i am um then you've got uh, 13 days left and uh, should be more than sufficient to deal with all your snipering needs we have one final kickstarter uh, which is another echo bittle diddy daddy wickle one. Uh, and this is just a nice little thing. Um, if you are like me, a bit extravagant with your dice rolling, and anybody who's watched the Let's Play will see me off and go, hey, <laughs> and then the dice will go barreling through miniatures and off tables everywhere. Uh, Sarissa have been messing around with uh, <laughs> full color prints, and uh, they've done a range of little dice towers. Uh, that are full color, simple to build, and will restrict your damage <laughs> to all your miniatures, uh, which is good. Uh, I do su suffer from terrible afflictions where they go everywhere. Um, this is a, a range <laughs> of dice towers. It's, stop laughing. This is a range of dice towers that are themed to certain games or periods. Uh, so if you are a big fan of, for example, Dark Age, or maybe you're getting into Clash of Katanas, or maybe you play a lot of World War II, and you want something a little bit different for the side of your table, or even on your table, uh, nice. then you can sneak some of these in. So they've done a, I suppose, Roxy Cinema could be the 70s. So your modern, your funky skull games, street adventures and street gangs, the warriors could all be kicking off in and around the Roxy. Um, they've also done a uh, feudal tower, I suppose, as well, uh, which I got a chance to unbox this week past. And I have to say that the print on them is very, very good. Uh, very clear, sharp definition and really high contrast on the colors as well because they're printing just straight over MDF essentially. I was worried about things like blurring or the colors sort of not being as sharp as they could have been. Um, they've been knocking through a couple of the stretch goals. So, you know, more of your rundown urban environment uh, has come along as has a fantasy dice tower and a dark age dice tower for Saga. Very handy when you're stacking your battle board, which is what everybody does in life. I'm fairly certain. They have not yet unlocked the Atlantic Bunker Dice Tower, which Love I really one. want to see oh, yeah. uh, for Fest on Europa, get up on the Normandy beaches. And it's simply because they've decided to replace the walls with uh, a rake of um, tank traps, yeah. tank yeah. traps, check hedgehogs uh, yeah. to keep your dice corralled in. <laughs> uh, but it's 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 a very small footprint. Um, I want to say it was nine centimeters by 20 centimeters footprint wise. And then they're sort of 15 to 20 tall. So it's not massive. You could just set them at the side of your board. Um, or if you want to have them sort of sitting on your table, they're not going to look as out of place as a big old. I like that one. Normally will. 
I like that one because they literally play with it in the middle of the table as yeah. a terrain piece. <laughs> a lot of them, Most especially them especially the more modern ones, are like that. They they fit in very nicely. They they have that sort of rugged urban look, and they don't look too out of place to be sitting there. Um, because you know it's it's just a building with a wall around it, so you can have it sort of snuck at the side to your heart's content. Uh, but I just thought it was really nice. It's a a technology, I suppose, that they've just started to play around with just before the event. Yeah, happened. they've they've done some trees, I think. Recently, they've done, they've done some flat trees. Store. They've got yeah. lava and rivers um, that are all printed using this. Uh, full color print straight onto MDF, and they've done a range of tokens and the like. So, this is just a another nice thing that they've, they've decided to come up with. And also, I think they play with somebody who does tend to chuck things around an awful lot. Um, so, so Gary got in there and designed the uh, the dice towers and uh, then the the skins for them. And in short order, they've they've come up with these. So, a cute little one. If somebody's looking for a little present for a gamer friend. Uh, then that might be a nice the, one to go the for. Th- the thing that looked for me is the thing that you were saying. The word for me is the thing was, it, was that you could put that in the middle of mm-hmm. your gaming table, yeah. and if you've painted up all your terrain similarly, it wouldn't look out of place. So you could just yeah. have this in situ and have it become part of the game, as well as it just being a place for you to house your dice and roll them and that kind of mm-hmm. thing. So I think it's a really neat idea, and I love that they've done gone with yeah, all the different go, go, genres go, and stuff. So scroll yeah. back down. This would be awesome, right? Scroll down. Scroll mm-hmm. down. Scroll down. Scroll there, right? If you had your squad in that sort of <clears throat> yard bit, and I came mm-hmm. along and just chucked my dice in on top of your squad, that'd be amazing. <laughs> oh, look, I'm in cover. <laughs> oh, no, all my men are dead. I have several <laughs> women are missing limbs. Yeah. I think I see a gun go under the table. Uh, I also quite like the fact that, I mean, most people are going to be picking up one. Let's face it, uh, some people may pick up one for every game they play if there's specific themes. But I do like the fact that they've done a club one where you can actually have your club logo emblazoned on them as well, and yeah, sort of one cool. one for every table type of thing as well. So, uh, yeah, just a nice little, I wouldn't say quality of life, although my opponents would say that if they've ever had to go and try and pick up dice from all over the floor after I've ruled an attack. Uh, so, yeah, if you're interested, there's nine days left for the full-coloured dice towers from Sarissa Precision, and you can get in on that and uh, protect your miniatures. Yes. That wraps us up for another week. We shall return once again on Sunday for the XLBS and our Cult of Games members will be joining us as we witter on about our hobby and yours. And like Lloyd said, if you're not already a member, you can get a 30-day free trial. You know what makes sense. Mm, Be there or be a rectangular thang. And if you want to win that one ring bundle from Free League Publishing, don't forget to throw a comment below and be a subscriber because I check. And if you're not, and I have to pick a a new winner, I get very annoyed. (laughs) Uh, otherwise we will see you again next Friday until then have a great week of gaming bye 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 go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and while you're at it why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong go on you know you want to click it go on